A growing list of brands has responded by cutting marketing ties with the NRA. Major financial institutions like the Bank of America and BlackRock say they're reviewing their relations with weapons manufacturers, and tech giants like Alphabet, Apple and Amazon are under pressure to drop NRA-sponsored content from their platforms. Let's get more insight on this now, on the corporate reaction to the shootings. Joining us live from London is Chris Roebuck. He's a visiting professor of transformational leadership at the Cass Business School. Uh, great to have you once again, Chris. Uh, look, there have been, as John said, many sh school shootings, sadly, in the US. Why are corporations getting behind this effort for stricter gun control now rather than in all of these previous incidents? I think one of the critical reasons is that those involved in this particular shooting are, uh, were at an extremely good school. They're teenagers, they're internet, social media savvy, they're able to express their own views. So they've created a PR momentum that says we want change. And if you look at the polls that are coming out in terms of the overall American population, you've got somewhere in the region of maybe 80 to 90 percent of the American population who say we need to do something about gun control. The commercial imperative is quite simple. The calculation is so basic. Look, we're a corporation. Either we can keep in with the NRA, which is five million people, so maybe 5% of the population, and we can upset 95% of the population, or we can upset 5% of the population, i.e. our consumers, and keep 95% happy. It's a no-brainer. Uh, perhaps, Chris, but w as we said, we've been here before. Um, what happens when the media spotlight moves away from all of this? Does that PR imperative that you talk about also move away with that? Thinking what is different here is the people that are promoting the transformation and the eloquence and the social media skills of the students concerned who are the victims, who have their own personal credibility, means that if they are genuinely determined to make this happen, they will keep the pressure up. With previous shootings in terms of the NRA brand, etc., etc., what happened was that after a, a certain amount of time, the momentum dropped because those who were involved weren't as eloquent a group at promoting their agenda. I think the other thing that is slightly different this time is that the issue of assault weapons in particular has come to the fore and that this group are saying, no, we don't want to take away everybody's guns, but nobody should have a military assault rifle in their possession because it's not something you defend your house with. And the NRA has taken a position to say, we don't want any change. So th the positions have been slightly more clearly defined. And I think the NRA has got itself into a position where they are trying to justify something that a significant proportion of the American population do not see as sensible. Mm. Let's break this down into hard dollars and cents, though. I mean, in terms of mm -hmm. the sheer scale of the amount of money that the pro-gun lobby can wield, that surely dwarfs the kind of uh, uh, money that now the anti-gun lobby uh, has, to, uh, has to offer and can bring to the table. That's a fair point in terms of the specifics of how much money each of those groups has. But I think what is really interesting about this particular case is that the anti-gun lobby group doesn't have to have the same amount of money as the NRA. They just merely have to use the money they have to change the opinions of the rest of the population. And what is happening is that that movement, I believe, is, is starting to happen if they can keep that momentum up. And also there's a fundamental logic behind what the, the group from the school are saying, particularly about assault rifles. The whole issue is, is, is ridiculously simple. As an ex-military officer, those weapons are capable of shooting hundreds of rounds a minute. They can shoot through walls. They can shoot through cars. So there is no justification for a normal person having one of those. And in a situation like the school, you don't even have to shoot at the people. You just shoot through the wall. So 
therefore their logic of saying these guns are really bad, we're not focusing on all guns, has resonated with a larger group of the American population. Very interesting. Chris Roebuck from the Cass Business School in London, thank you very much indeed.